Hey, hey, what is up YouTube? Andrew Rooney here. I'm really happy you've joined me on this video. A video that I hope to turn into potentially a video series on the most important things I learned at music school. Be sure to leave a comment and let me know what you think of this video and whether you would like more content like this in the future. So the first thing I'd like to talk about and something that was probably a game changing moment for me was when I discovered for myself, the gear myth. It's not the gear. So just a brief intro, if you're new to my channel or you're not familiar with my background on the instrument, I studied jazz at the University of Auckland, finishing in 2009 with a Bachelor of Music. I did have to do summer school the following year as the music degree at the time called for a non-music related paper under the banner of general education. I took Spanish 100 y eso es por qué puedo hablar con el estepario siberiano en castellano. The jazz degree was full immersion and full of very valuable and sometimes painful lessons. Now this one really upsets me. I was at the school about 70 to 80 hours a week. And when I wasn't at the school, I was gigging. I had three regular gigs a week at the time, jazz gigs, and then whatever popped up on top of that. Sleeping, eating, and living music. I learned some really valuable lessons that would be hard to understand or comprehend if you have never been in an intense environment like that. Now, I understand that previous statement could be construed as elitist, and we're all well aware of the jazz police running around with their little sirens and telling us what's hip and what's not. So anything I say in this video or future videos of this nature, they're not meant to be universal truths. They're truths I found to be real for myself. With that said, there were certain things that became stone cold realities and now I consider common sense that previous to the course were shrouded in mystery and confusion. So gear. I learnt gear is almost irrelevant. Hold up, wait a minute. The way I viewed gear previously and the way I see it talked about, especially online, is just not really how gear works. An example of this would be me walking into my favorite drum shop, Drum City, circa 2005, just before I started the degree, and asking, uh, yeah, what kind of toms and heads do I need to get that Jeff Picaro sound on Al Jarreau's Breaking Away? Or, hey Tristan, what's up man? Hey, um, what kind of snare should I get to, um, to get that Vidi Caluda sound? <sighs> Hey Dan, how's it going, bro? Hey, um, what sort of ride should I get? I really want to get that um, Tony Williams sound that he had on Miles Smiles. Ah, oh, man, true story. So here it is. Here is the story on how my whole view on gear changed within a few crushing seconds. So I'll set the scene. First year jazz student and one of the first sessions with my combo. It just so happened that my drum tutor took my combo in my first year and we're running through the Chick Corea tune Spain. It was way over my head and I was in no way ready to tackle that tune. The other tunes we were running that day weren't going particularly well and the whole combo was pretty flat. Now off to the side my drum tutor and the person running the combo is just sitting there quietly observing what is going on. Now hold the scenario in your head and if we just rewind a few nights previously, I had seen my tutor, Ron Sampson, playing in the auditorium at jazz school, and I just marveled at his amazing ride sound. I knew I needed to get Ron's cymbals to make the combo, to make myself sound good, and to make everything sound coherent and jazz. <laughs> I just needed to purchase whatever magical symbols Ron had been using that night and jazz. So I'm sitting there hacking my way through these tunes, dirty looks from the other band members. They don't know I'm on the wrong symbols. <laughs> also the 
kit was really beat up and really big, like a rock size Yamaha kit. Completely wrong for the tunes we were playing. <laughs> Old heads, wrong kit, out of tune, wrong cymbals. I'm just sitting there praying and thinking, I need to save up the money for whatever cymbals Ron was using. So I'm playing away and I'm thinking, I can get on my Remo Bop kit, get those cymbals, get everything, you know, the everything adjusted just right. And the daydream ended. Ron stops the carnage and says, Hey, Andrew, can I have a play through the tune with the group? He's Canadian. Now, <laughs> I still remember thinking, well, yeah, you can jump on. You know, you're going to have a hard time. It's, it's, uh, it's not the right kit, not the right cymbals. But yeah, do your best, man. Without adjusting anything, using my sticks, taking no time, adjusting nothing. Literally just grabbing my sticks out of my hands, sitting down and counting the band off. He smashed his way musically through the hits in the head of the tune and then launched into a lightning fast samba. The group sounded like a million dollars and you could not wipe the smile off every player's face. In that moment, being in the room, witnessing it with my own eyes, all my previous gear assumptions and beliefs were literally blown apart. It's not the gear. What was really shocking about this incident, I'll call it Spain Gate, was not that my tutor had played the song better than me. I would expect that. What was shocking was how different the gear sounded. And to my dismay, shortly afterward, I found out that the cymbal sound that I had been drooling over a few nights before, that ride cymbal that he had been playing was a $50 ride, like an ornamental ride from a local Chinese emporium. I kid you not. I've thought a lot about that lesson since, and it was really profound. Without teaching, teaching me anything, my tutor had taught me something invaluable. There was no denying what I had seen. He had busted a myth right in front of my eyes. It wasn't a magic trick. It wasn't somebody tricking you on YouTube and saying it's all organic and real and it's not. This literally happened in front of me. Ultimately, I realized one of the big advantages of a full immersion course like a three-year jazz degree is that your standards are raised considerably. You are suddenly not surrounded by the best drummers at your school or your church or in your friend's band. Now you are surrounded by the best players in your community, city, country, or in the cases of some music courses, potentially some of the best players in the world. Despite me telling you this as somewhat of a cautionary tale, these type of things are just not as impactful as anecdotes. You really do need to experience them yourselves. You need to feel what it feels like to know these things in your bones. Being told these kind of things by a dude on YouTube or by some guy that you're having a beer with at the pub who used to be, of course, an amazing drummer. And of course, and hold on. No. Wait. So you're saying a $400 kit is as good as a $4,000 kit? How dare you? No, never said that. And by the way, it depends. If you've only got $400, a $400 kit is better than a $4,000 drum kit. I certainly don't want to be picking on any brands here. I think that's just ridiculous and completely unfair, but let's take a cheap $400 Ashton drum kit versus a really nice, expensive $4,000 DW drum kit. Let's make this more interactive. Question, the $400 Ashton, good heads, tuned up perfectly, versus the $4,000 DW drum kit, not tuned at all. Which one is going to sound better? A, the 400 tuned up Ashton. B, the untuned $4,000 DW. Thank you.
That's right, A, the tuned up Ashton. Round two, next question. Let's say both kits are tuned up just right, absolutely perfectly. Who's gonna sound better? A, me on the perfectly tuned DW. B, Gavin Harrison playing the tuned up $400 Ashton. That's right, B, Gavin on the $400 Ashton. You sound good. A drum kit doesn't sound good. The sound you get on a drum kit is the function of many factors. Your mileage on the instrument, skill level, experience, sensitivity, comfort with the material that you're actually playing, and then the drums themselves. Tuning normally being the key thing, and beyond that, the specific timbre or potential of that particular instrument. If anyone's curious, I record and gig on a Yamaha Stage Custom, which is $699, brand new, at Sweetwater at the moment, not a paid promotion. <laughs> Brilliant middle of the road kit, never had any complaints. Disclaimer, am I saying sell your amazing gear and get the crustiest, worst piece of junk that you can find on the internet? No, I'm saying don't rely on it. Nice gear is solid, it's enjoyable, and sometimes it's just generally more inspiring to play on a beautiful drum kit. As a drum teacher, I would advise you to invest more in your skills and your ability on the kit than the gear. That way you will improve your sound. <laughs> That's all. I look forward to a lot of fiery debate on this one. People get really passionate about gear. Not as passionate about practice, I find. Guys, please hit me in the comments with your questions and complaints. Hit subscribe, like if you enjoyed the video, share it with a friend. Let me know if you would like more content like this in the future. As always, catch you on the next video. Ciao.